Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. So this is another video on corpus linguistics, and today we'll be talking about word formation processes and their productivity. That is, we'll take corpus data, we'll take AntConc, a spreadsheet software, and we'll try to calculate corpus-based measures of productivity. Okay, now before we do that, before we touch anything corpus-related, I want you to do me a favor and take a pen and a piece of paper and take three minutes to come up with as many different English words as you can. And these words should be in three different categories. They should be ending in the suffix ness, they should be ending in asian, and they should be ending in uns. Okay, if you want to do that, pause the video here, come back in three minutes, and I will be continuing in three, two, one. Here we go. So ness, that would be words like <clears throat> greatness, sweetness, abruptness, things like that. And my guess is that you found a lot of words like that, okay? So I'm willing to say that you found more words ending in ness than Asian and ens combined, okay? Let me know if that turns out to be true, you know, write it in the comments. Also, add the words that you actually came up with. Um, words ending in Asian, <clears throat> so there's situation, there's abomination, there is registration, and uh, again, I'm confident that you found a few words like that, but fewer than ness. And I would be pretty sure that you found the fewest words with uns, okay? There is remembrance, there is arrogance, there is, um, well, Actually, I'm having difficulties coming up with words like these, and I'm sure that for you the situation is kind of the same. Right, now, corpus-based measures of productivity are interesting because they are very much in line with these behavioral measures. So this little game that we played, it sort of echoes the kind of results that you can get from corpora, and that, of course, is a cool thing. Corpus linguistics connects or should connect with psycholinguistics in interesting ways and the measurement of morphological productivity is one such area. Okay, this video is going to have three parts. In the first part we will use AntConc to retrieve data on different English word formation processes. I'm sticking to nominalization suffixes here, but you can apply the same logic also to other suffixes and other word formation processes that you may be interested in. In the second part of the video, we will import the data that we've collected into Excel, and I'll show you how to format the data so that we can analyze the word formation processes with respect to their uh, productivity. And in the third part, then, we will apply and compare two different measures of morphological productivity. I'm going to talk about two measures that are called potential productivity and expanding productivity, and these have been developed in the 1990s by Harald Bayen. Um, they're still widely used, yeah, even though they're a couple years old. There's newer stuff around, but this is a very good way to get into the subject of morphological productivity before you go on to study the more complicated stuff. All right, so let's go. Let's collect some data. As always, we start by firing up AntConc and loading some corpus files into it. So if you have the BNCA files, I recommend that you use those. So <clears throat> go to File and Open Directory and navigate to the folder that's called BNCA. If you don't have the BNCA files, you can pick any corpus that you like. Of course, your results will be different, but you can still follow all the steps that I describe in this video. So this is what the AntConc interface looks like once the BNCA files have been loaded into it. And before we start, there's one more thing that we need to do. And also, if you have other corpus files in the uh, corpus, this is a useful thing to do. So I want you to go to Settings and then Tool Preferences. And in Tool Preferences, the first category is Concordance. And in that category, please activate the checkbox, put delimiter around hits in keyword and context display. This needs to be activated. That will make our lives a lot easier once we get to the import into Excel stage. Right, if you got all that in place, 
let's go and let's collect some data. And on this slide, you see a regular expression that allows you to retrieve words that are nouns and that end in the suffix ness, right? So um, what I've done here is that I've selected the checkbox regex. So AntConc will use regular expressions and um, the search pattern is in the search term window here. The sorting doesn't really matter anyway. You have it set up will work, but I have mine at uh, first right, second right, third right. And if I search for this pattern, um, the first results look like this. So I have abrasiveness, abruptness, absoluteness, acquisitiveness, acuteness, and adaptedness adaptiveness as well yeah so these are the first kind of types and um, overall Ancong finds 8725 hits for this regular expression now if you're doing this at home uh, please be aware that after ness I put a white space okay that white space is also in here in the search term um, I doubt that your results will be a lot different if you leave it out yeah but still try and be sure put it in because if you don't um, <clears throat> Ancong will also find the plurals yeah nesses now nest words aren't pluralized very much but I'm willing to bet that you would be uh, you would get a couple more hits than I do here and anyway we're only interested in the singular forms of these words right okay so these are our Ness words. Um, the next step would be to save the concordance. So go to File, Save Output, and that will open a window that allows you to save the concordance in a TXT file. Give that file a name that you can recognize, such as ness.txt, and save it somewhere where you will able to to find it once you go looking for it. Okay, on your desktop or I don't know where. Right. Um, then let's go on to uh, do the same for another suffix, in this case Asian. So um, I really just changed the regular expression by replacing Ness with Asian. Again, look out for the white space at the end when you're doing this at home. And that gives me abbreviation, application, aberration, and a whole bunch of others. You see that there are many hits here, uh, 39,703. And of course, we also want to save these results as asian.txt. Okay, um, feel free to, to pause this video and, and get this done. Yeah, um, I'll go through a couple of more here. So the next we want to do is itty. So again, change the regular expression so that you replace asian with itty. <clears throat> I get uh, 24,944 hits and uh, ability is a very frequent one of those. So on the first screen, it's really just ability and nothing else. Save that and then go on to ment. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, again, abandonment, that's a frequent type. Um, I get 23,573 hits for that. <clears throat> um, after that we get to ENS. Okay, if you struggled with ENS in the little exercise in the beginning, well, uh, you could have thought of abeyance. Yeah, <laughs> how come you didn't come up with that? Um, abundance. Well, maybe some of you did come up with abundance, but I doubt it. Yeah, right. Um, and then NC. Did I ask you for ENS or NC? I did ask you for ENS, right? So NC gives you agency, emergency, adjacency, and so on and so forth. I get 2,451 hits for that. Okay, that completes our data collection process. Yeah, so we have, what is it, six different um, word formation processes. Now let's go on and import all these txt files into Excel and that's not going to be so difficult this time around you can just 
um, highlight everything in those txt files and copy and paste it directly into Excel. It will look like this or something like this. Yeah. Uh, the most important thing that should happen is that you see the um, search term as a separate column. Okay. And if you have actually selected the put uh, delimiter around search term in the keyword and context, that should work. Okay. If uh, there's a problem here, go back to AntConf and check whether you actually selected that box. Yeah. Right. Um, so we don't actually need all the context today. Yeah. Normally I tell you to keep the context, save everything. But uh, here we can just delete everything that appears to the left and right. And all that I've kept here are the numbers and the file uh, sources of these words, okay? Even though we're not using them, but uh, it might be interesting to look at at some later point, so I decided to keep them here. But what we're working with is really this B column uh, that I labeled Ness, okay? So I created headers for the number of examples, the uh, Ness words, and the files where these nest words come from. Okay, now we want to do the same for Asian. Um, so you see the format is the same. I still need to correct nest and replace that with Asian, but otherwise you see where I'm getting with all of this. So we have nest and Asian, and we want to do the same for itty, for ment, for uns, and for NC. So all the concordances that we saw a moment ago in AntConc are now saved in Excel and we can proceed to working with it in order to find out more about the productivity of these word formation processes. Right, so uh, what do we do now? Actually, um, for each suffix we want to find out three pieces of information and this is not going to be very difficult, okay? So the first question that we want answered is this one here, how many hits do we have? This is the so-called token frequency of the word formation process of the suffix, okay? These are the numbers of hits that you saw earlier in AntConc. <clears throat> And of course, also from our data in Excel, we can retrieve that number, the token frequencies, and you probably know how to do it already. Now, an important second question is this one here. We want to find out how many different words are there. So going back to uh, NC here for a moment. So absorbency, we have a couple of times, that's uh, five different tokens, but only one type, okay? absorbency. Then there's adjacency, that's a second type, and this occurs four times. Then we have agency, which apparently occurs a gazillion of times. And uh, we want to arrive at a count of, okay, how many different NC words are there in the corpus that we've been using? Yeah? Okay, I'll show you how to find that out with uh, with Excel, you may have a lingering suspicion of how this actually works. Yeah? Um, and then what we want to find out is how many of these types occur only once. These are the famous hapex legomena. Yeah? I've used that term before. Here we're encountering it again. So in measures of morphological productivity, hapex legomena play a very important role and we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so how can we find answers to this question? Well, you guessed it, it's time for another few pivot tables. So let's go to NES, that is the first of our word formation processes, and we highlight the column in which we have all the uh, words. Yeah. So highlight column B, you can do that by clicking into this little field up here, and the whole thing should light up in green and gray. And after that, you can go to the data menu item, which should have an option that lets you create a pivot table, or if you're fancy like me, a tableau croisé dynamique. Okay, uh, right, so if you do that, 
there will be another sheet popping up in your Excel file. And um, here, <clears throat> it won't look like this in the beginning, yeah, but it will look like this once you drag Ness into the lines. That's the first thing you need to do. And you need to drag it into the values, okay? So that for each Ness word, we have uh, a line and how often that word occurs. So that's what we see here. Abrasiveness, we check that it occurs five times. Abruptness occurs twice. Absoluteness occurs once. Acquisitiveness twice, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we've made tables like this before for our color structural analysis, so all of this should be child's play for you by now. Okay, aloneness, apartness. Why am I seeing all these? words i don't know something to do with the quarantine um anyway let's move on and copy and paste uh these values here okay so the words and the frequencies take that and copy it into a new sheet where you're not bothered by the pivot table uh infrastructure here <clears throat> you could also close it down but i prefer to copy and paste it so that it's clean and you have it in a separate sheet. Um, okay, there we are. <clears throat> and here we can now determine, well, we, we can find out answers to the questions that we have. So uh, if we scroll all the way down, yeah, so from abrasiveness, abruptness, absoluteness, uh, so we have A and just the beginning of B here, if we scroll all the way down to, well, it ends in W and Y, uh, so wryness and youthfulness are the last ones in the alphabet. Um, this shows us that we have 808 types, okay, 809 minus 1, because you see the first line is actually, that's a header line, so we have to subtract that. 808 types and um, a total of 8,725 tokens. You remember that from the AntConf file where we saw how many hits we had. We see it here. It's the same, so that's reassuring. Okay, wobbliness, wimpishness. Anyway, um, now we want to keep track of all of this information, not only for Ness, but for all the word formation processes that we're investigating. So I want you to create a new sheet in your Excel file, and I want you to start an overview table. So uh, in the first column, list all the different suffixes that we're studying, Ness, Asian, Iti, Ment, Uns, and NC. And then in the columns, there is space for the tokens, for the types, and for the hapexes. Okay, and right now for Ness, we have information on the tokens and we have information on the types, and we're still looking for information on the hapexes, but maybe you already have an idea on how to get that information. So if you do have an idea, why don't you pause the video and mess around with your Excel file until you have an answer to that question and can fill in a number into D2, okay? This cell here. Um, if you don't want to do that, well, let's just see how it's done, right? So we go back to the nest table, scroll back up, and uh, highlight both columns, yeah? And uh, now we can actually sort after the tokens from the word that has the most tokens to the words that have the fewest tokens but actually this time around let's do it in such a way that we sort from the smallest frequencies to the largest frequencies i'll show you why that is useful in just a second so under the data menu item you have an option that says sort or trier and uh, you can trier after any of the columns that you have highlighted, but I want you to select tokens, okay? And it will ask you, okay, do you want this sorted from small to big or from big to small, 
or alphabetically or what is it that you want and you just need to say okay I want it sorted from small to big which is what we have here okay that is the result it starts with one <clears throat> And you see the alphabetical order is still in place. So first we get the A words with one, then we get the B words with one, then we get the C words with one, and so on and so forth. And all of these, of course, are Ness hapaxes, hapax legomena, words that appear only once in our corpus. And now it's really just a matter of scrolling down to see where the switch from one to two is happening. Okay, so here we have Rhinus, which occurs only once, and after that we have Abruptness, which occurs twice. Okay, so in terms of hapexes, we have 324, again 325, minus the header line that we have on top. Okay, so we can add that to our overview table, and we're basically done with the tokens, types, and hapexes for Ness. Right. So at this point, I have a little exercise for you. You can stop the video, you can pause it, and uh, do the same with the other suffixes that we have data for. So for each suffix, make a pivot table, copy and paste the results to a new sheet, make column labels for the types and the tokens. So types are the words, tokens are the frequencies of those words. Sort after the tokens from small to big so that you have all the ones on top. And then you can just read off those tables, the token frequencies, the type frequencies, and the number of hapexes. And you can put those values in the overview table. So I suggest that now you pause this video, you make yourself a nice cup of coffee or tea or whatever you like. Yeah, uh, you, you put on a nice record or no, whatever, and uh, you click your way through Excel for like 20 minutes or so and um, put the values in the overview table. And once you've done that, well, I'll see you again and we'll keep going. Okay, I'm going to continue now. Here are the results that I got. Yeah, If yours differ by one or two, uh, don't worry, that's going to be fine. If you're working with other corpus data altogether, you may want to compare yours against these in terms of how the numbers relate to each other, okay? Um, so how the token frequencies relate to the type frequencies and to the hapexes. There should be similarities that you sort of see in the data, even though the underlying corpora are different ones. Now let's inspect this table a little bit. You remember that in the beginning of this video, I asked you to find words with Ness, with Asian, and with Ens. If we look at the uh, token frequencies of these three, um, Asian is actually the most frequent one of the three. Okay, so Ness has 8,700, Asian has 39,000, and Ens has 13,000. So if token frequency were the decisive factor, then you should have lots more words with Asian than with Ness and with Ens. In fact, you should argue that, okay, there should be most words with Asian and then uh, fewer words with Ens and fewest actually with Ness. And obviously, that is not the result we got, okay? So what you can conclude from this is that token frequency of a suffix is not the decisive factor. It's not what explains whether a suffix is productive or not, okay? How easily you can come up with new words and how easily you can process existing words. So um, the answer has to be somewhere else. And here we have the types and the hapexes. So in terms of uh, types, <clears throat> the most frequent, uh, the, the, the highest type frequency that we have here is actually Asian. Okay, 1100 types. And uh, Ness is the next one. It has 808 types. Itty has a solid 661. Ment has 339. Uns has 179. So this would explain, type frequency would uh, 
be a good explanation if you sort of found similar amounts of words for ness and for asian and fewer words for uns. Maybe that's what you found out, okay? But uh, there's a third piece of information that is very important, and those would be the hapax legomena, the types that occur only once. And we see that here, ness is actually the leader, okay? Ness has 324 types, Asian, despite the fact that it's a lot more frequent and despite the fact that it has more types overall, it has fewer apexes than ness, okay? So that's an interesting asymmetry. And this kind of asymmetry actually explains why people find it easier to think of words in ness. There are more apexes floating around and uh, more words that you can think of. Okay, um, and well, not a big surprise, okay, uns actually has a tiny number of hapexes when you compare that to the overall number of tokens that we have found in the corpus. Right, let me say something about the first measure of productivity that we're going to apply here. Uh, that measure goes by the name of potential productivity and it is calculated in a very simple way, okay? So even if numbers aren't your thing, numbers are not my thing by the way, um, it's the hapexes divided by the tokens. So if we're looking at this table, it's this number here divided by that number there for any of the six suffixes that will give us a ratio. And uh, that is already the number that we're working with. So the logic of potential productivity is this one here. So given all uses of a suffix, that would be the tokens, yeah? Given all these uses, how many of these occur only once? Yeah? So a large ratio of hapexes indicates that the suffix is highly productive. Okay, so how do we do that in practical terms? We uh, write a little formula, and this is really not a very dangerous formula, into Excel, uh, where we specify that we want this cell here, D2, divided by this cell here, B2, right? So 324 divided by 8725, and that will give us um, 0.037, yeah? So something on the order of 3.7%. That is the potential productivity of Ness. And even though, well, 0.4%, that might sound small, uh, in terms of potential productivity, it's actually quite large. Yeah? So ness is a productive suffix. You can make new words with it easily. And uh, that is reflected in this number. If we compare that to the other word formation processes, we see that ness is actually higher or larger than all others. So Asian, even though it has many types and many apexes, um, overall, the potential productivity comes down to 0 0.007. Interesting. Um, Itty has uh, 0 0.0064. Uh, Ment has 0 0.003. Uns has 0 0.002. So here we would be in the ballpark of a construction that's definitely not productive, okay? It's, it's really hard to make new words with uns and with ment and also with nc, yeah? <clears throat> nc being marginally higher than uh, uns and ment there. Okay, um, that's potential productivity. The second measure that I want to introduce you to is called expanding productivity and it's calculated in a very similar way. It also starts with the hapexes of the suffix that we're looking at, but that number, those hapexes aren't divided by the tokens. Uh, that number is divided by all hapexes that we find in the corpus that we've been using. Okay, so given all single-use instances of a suffix, how big a share of all single-use items in the corpus is that. So expanding productivity, if you like, looks not only at one word formation process, but it looks at all 
word formation processes and how many hapexes they generate, and then calculates the share of our word formation process in this global ecology of different word formation processes. So a large ratio of suffix hapexes, yeah, this first term in the equation, that would mean that the suffix is relatively productive as compared to other word formation processes that are used in the corpus. Okay, so for that, we actually need to calculate, well, you need, we need a new number that we don't have just yet. So we need to return to AntConc just for a second. Um, okay, uh, so do me a favor, go back to AntConc and uh, set the tag settings in uh, settings, global settings to hide tags. Uh, we need to do that because we're going to make a word list. Yeah, So you'll see why we're making a word list in just a second. If you're familiar with Ancon's word list tool, so um, this is one more application of that tool. <clears throat> so as soon as you've uh, set hide tags and you've hit the apply button, um, go to the word list tool, okay? Set the uh, search term uh, to words, okay? And there should be nothing in the search window, in the search term window, yeah? And uh, the sort by tool should be set to sort by frequency. It's its default position, so you won't need to change anything unless you fiddled with it before, yeah? <clears throat> And uh, then all you need to do is uh, hit start and maybe wait for a minute or two because, well, Ancon is working its way through a 12 million word corpus. If everything goes according to plan, then there should be a list that appears in the main window of Ancon, starting with the, of, and, to, uh, in, and so on and so forth. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, in the second column here, you see the frequencies of these words, how often you find the, how often you find of, how often you find and, and so on and so forth. And uh, suppose you want to find out about the um, number of apexes in a corpus, I think you already have an idea of how you could find that out. So if you do have an idea, again, pause this video, fiddle with Ancong, see if you can get the number that you're interested in, and then come back to the video. But if you don't, let me just point out that we have already a very important piece of information up here, the word types, okay? So in the corpus that we've loaded into Ancon, there are 137,980 different words, okay? And that is an important number that we want to keep in mind. Um, but uh, <clears throat> for now, let us scroll down this word list until we discover the first word that appears only once, okay? So you can scroll and scroll and scroll. I suggest you take the little, um, it's called a thingy, by the way. So you need to take the thingy and um, slide it down until you get to precisely this position between Zatfen, Zvaitina, Zygomatic, Zzz, and then there is the first word uh, that appears only once, which would be a. Ah. And there's another one, a. Ah. And uh, even a third one, a. Ah. Yeah. Infrequent words in corpora. I mean, if you have a few hours to kill, just take a corpus, look at Hapax Legum, and I mean, that's what I would do. Okay. Um, but more importantly, there is something cool that we can do here. Uh, because you see the rank of these words. And the first hapax legomenon has rank 86,615. Okay, so we know how many word types there are in total in the corpus, and we know how many words occur more than once, so at least twice. So we can simply um, subtract uh, this number here, 86,614, from the overall number of word types 
and that will give us the number of all the words that appear only once. Okay. In other words, we have calculated the overall number of corpus apexes, uh, 51,366. Yeah? Not quite half of all the word types, but sort of a, yeah, more than a third. <clears throat> and that's, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so that's what we got. Now, with that piece of information, uh, we can start a new column in our overview table in the Excel file. And uh, of course, the overall number of corpus apexes is going to be the same for all six word formation processes that we have here. So um, yeah, do me a favor, create a column that says corpus apexes, and then uh, put 51,366 in the first six uh, cells here. And then we can calculate expanding productivity by dividing <clears throat> the number of apexes by the number of corpus apexes. So 324 divided by 51,366, that will be the expanding productivity of Ness. And dividing 294 by 51,366, that's going to be the expanding productivity of Asian, and so on and so forth. Okay, so these are the values of expanding productivity. 0.6% uh, for Ness, 0.5% for Asian, 0.3% for Itty, and so on and so forth. Now, there are one or two among you who will think, wait, we are dividing these numbers by these numbers and all of these are the same so expanding productivity is really a function just of the hapexes so we might just take the hapexes as such and say okay that's our number of expanding productivity um, why do we have to divide one by the other to arrive at this number yeah so this becomes interesting if, for example, you want to compare word formation processes across different corpora, yeah? different corpora will have different numbers of hapexes in them. Or let's say you have a corpus with different text types. Yeah? So you have a corpus that has spoken data and written data, or it has scientific writing and prose from fiction and so on and so forth. If you want to compare that, um, you can apply this kind of logic and arrive at values of expanding productivity that you can sort of compare, okay? Right, um, that just to, to add this little piece of information. <clears throat> so, um, also with expanding productivity, we see that Ness is actually higher in productivity than all the remaining ones. And this, of course, again, you see from the hapexes already because Ness has the largest number of hapexes uh, as compared to the other five. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, this is a shorter video today. Yeah. So I want to close here with a little exercise that I want you to do. Uh, please use AntConc to retrieve examples of all adverbs that end in li and all adjectives ending in ing. In order for you to do that, uh, please revert the settings that we changed just a couple of minutes ago. So in global settings, select uh, show tags so that you can write regular expressions that make use of the tags. So the adverb tag and the adjective tag. If you're not quite sure what these are, you know, search for an adjective, search for an adverb, and check out the tag that you see in front of them, and then use that information to write your regular expression. Yeah, so in global settings, select show tags, uh, activate the little checkbox, and then in the search, select regex for the word list. We went to words instead of regex and uh, that you need to change back. And then determine token frequencies, type frequencies, and hapex legomena for Li adverbs and for Ing 
adjectives and uh, determine potential productivity and expanding productivity and compare those numbers to the six nominalization suffixes that we already analyzed. Okay, that's it for today. Have a good week and I'll see you soon. Bye.